everybody and welcome back to the best show on earth it's kcm week number three we've got stork versus barracks start us off here pvt let's go dominator game one bringing up the lineup here it is a banger rush royal barracks no mini stork queen jadong and shine there's so many names that i'm excited to watch here today who are you most looking forward to, Shun? Stork, actually, probably. And maybe Jadong, because these guys have been, like, turning it up recently. Uh, especially if you guys have been watching the SSL. Some pretty pretty good performances all around. I'm not going to say anything too much more about that. But yeah, I'm, my eyes are definitely on Stork and Jadong. They're probably some of the older dinosaurs here in the lineup, but with a lot more teeth to them than meets the eye. Almost like they're being reanimated and they've, like, become, like, an Elden Ring boss or something. Yes, the uh, dinosaur Prodonus is no longer extinct, is back in action. It seems like he's really taking it more seriously uh, for this season of the SSL. I mean, the name change, it's a brand new tournament all over again. A lot of players are really excited to try and snag that victory, but... You know, I don't know if Stork has what it takes, but he's definitely going to show us some great games, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, the guy is extremely talented, and one of the things that was kind of holding him back, you could argue, was his work ethic, maybe not putting in quite as many hours as some of these other guys, but recently he's been taking it seemingly quite more seriously, and when you, when you combine hard work with the talent, you can kind of, like, start just, like, tricking on the other guys that might be putting in the time, but don't quite have the same kind of, like, finesse that you do. A uh, very storied player here in Stork, and he's going to be going up against a relatively new comer to the scene in comparison. Barracks over here in the top left hand corner has also been showing some amazing improvement over the past season. Yeah. His play has gotten so much more sharp. It feels like he's got some great practice partners that he's been playing around with, and has really leveled up his game a lot. Oh, especially in that Terran versus Zerg matchup. So it'd be interesting to see how he's now going to be stacking up to the likes of Stork. Now, Stork has been clowned on a little bit in the past, not having the best of uh, performances. But once upon a time, this guy was an absolute monster. So it'd be absolutely thrilling to see if he can kind of return himself to some kind of form of glory. And Barracks himself being up and coming... Uh, isn't necessarily the best in this matchup, but I actually feel like he's improved a lot um, recently, so I'm, I'm, my eyes are on him to see what he can bring to the table to improve his um, versus Protoss, because honestly, maybe the one thing holding him back as a player. Yeah, his versus Zerg is insane. He is so scary in that matchup, and that's really what we need right now, because there's been so much domination coming from uh, Zerg in the SSL recently. We've got so many great Zerg players and two two-time ASL victors in Solki and Queen. We've right. got Queen in the lineup here today. He hasn't been performing as well as of late, but he's got a fire in his belly as well for uh, some you know, a comeback here. And uh, I can't wait to see him play it as well now. We haven't had the Nexus thrown down here from Stork just yet. I didn't see if he was uh, spinning that core or not, but the SCV got a good look inside the main base, and Varix is going to push out with his first few Marines and this Vulture, try to get some damage on the first Dragoon. Maybe able to shave off those shields, gets the repair as well. Looks like Stork will just have to retreat, taking that high ground for himself. Looks like he won't need a bunker right away as long as he's controlling this high ground area and he's put some damage on this dragoon will stork try to challenge this he is going to come up here great targeting right on that low hp dragoon he's probably going to pick that off oh the vulture survives with 5 hp that's crazy close but, yeah, it's uh, a really nice yeah. little tactical mini game there, there between both players, like uh, by a thread as well. Like that, that, that exchange was very quickly um, likely to end up with one of the dragoons dying or the vulture dying, and uh, neither transpired, but both came dangerously close. Very, very close, and you gotta say that 
barracks came out ahead in that you can repair that vulture but you can't repair this dragoon it goes back home with only a few hp it will regenerate shields but it's just not going to be as strong if a follow-up push comes and I really like Barracks' play so far. He's utilizing this map, uh, Dominator, to allow himself to cut corners here. This is really what you want to do to try and get ahead in this matchup is try to cut all the corners you can without overextending yourself or, you know, getting punished. And he's been able to not build a bunker here, which is a huge, a huge advantage. He's going to get his second factory up way quicker. And he hasn't even produced that many marines either. No. No, he's just got quite a lot of value out of these initial units, which is kind of allowing him to cut a few corners now. We, we don't even see a bunker or anything. He's he's getting away with the absolute bare minimum. Even trying to be a little bit aggressive now. And the only Dragoon here to try and save against these mines uh, coming in here is this low HP Dragoon, which is going to be killed uh, one for one trade. And with the mine uh, not quite getting an ideal detonation off on those other Dragoons, but... Yeah, I would say like so far so good by um, Barracks here and it looks like Stork's going to be taking this third relatively on curve at six minutes as kind of expected. Does manage to clear up that mine as well without taking any damage to the Dragoons. So, so far so good in trying to establish his own uh, economic powerhouse uh, for the future stages of the game. But so far I would I would have to say that I'm really liking Barracks's position. This is a very tough map for Terran with the way that the main base is situated there's so much empty space around the main so many different angles that yeah. shuttles can fly in you're really going to need every little advantage in the early game well, to make it work i think what makes it so tricky is the fact that you're in this like pit so you have this like high ground circle around you so you can't even like easily detect the shuttles as they're incoming so you have to have like floating engineering bays or what have you to, to spot above that whereas on like other traditional maps you don't have to worry about that you can kind of see the the red dots coming in much earlier so you have much more reaction times there's a lot of things that are negative about this main base setup for terrans so it's a little bit frustrating uh, more than usual but if you can navigate it going into the mid game phase without taking too much economic damage I, I feel like terrans would be okay it's just that it's so difficult to get there usually absolutely Ooh, the probe transfer slipping by under the nose of barracks he's close oh he's gonna dive in maybe no the dragon's there on the high ground and the probes have already made their way past so he won't be able to get any probe kills here he's got some defense in the main base. I saw him set up mines really, really early on in his main to make sure that nothing could get dropped there. But Stork's going to come across and maybe try to do some damage. I mean, with this much anti-air, with the Goliath mixed in there, some marines, we've got three tanks and mines. Shouldn't be able to get too much damage, but let's see what Stork can bring here with this aggression. He's actually going to head straight to the natural and there's already a floating engineering bay with the turret prepared so he gets to see that shuttle wants to come in and he gets to deny it right off the bat so uh, barracks is going to be pretty safe right now just setting up tanks in the main getting his factories online is this going to be a six fact push or will yeah, he go for an extra so. cc no yeah you're you're right, he's just going to go directly into 6 fact. This has been so popular recently. Delaying your plus 2 and just going for plus 1 attack into plus 1 armor. And going for a really heavy pressure play. It has worked out very well for the Terran players, but it really feels like it's the only way to deal with modern Protoss. Right, once upon a time, yeah, this wasn't the style at all, but like players like me who kind of adopted this more unit heavy upgrade light style and got Terran's thinking of like, you know, ways of addressing this matchup and using that kind of methodology. And now we've got these kinds of mid range builds where we're just going to focus on churning out as many units as possible with uh, not quite as much of an investment into those earlier upgrades. So you don't quite trade pound for pound as well with the Protoss as you would like to later on, but because you've got so much more units it's, it's either easier to take your third or easier to do a push timing to actually punish the pros being too greedy for sure and for a long time protoss players were just able to bust terrans wide open in the early mid game right as they were trying to take their third base and trying to get all their upgrades at the same time but it's not as common anymore stork is actually finding a way in here this is kind of crazy 
Great pick up there. Going to drop the Reaver right on top of this tank. See if you can get a big shot. That's a very nice hit. Four kills on that already. Another three more. Dealing quite a bit of damage here in the main, but at the same time, Barracks just going across the map. He's going to siege up with his tanks. Can he get some good shots off? Wow. Annihilating that Dragoon count, but still more damage going on in the main. 11 kill Reaver is being an absolute pest. But is there enough back at home for Stork to survive? Yeah, there's a lot to say of great for both players. It's absolutely fantastic Vulture body blocking to keep those in the siege tank range to get so many shots off and microing very well while doing this push. But Stork, you know, killed quite a lot um, in the base there. Definitely not enough to uh, kind of compensate for how much he's losing back at home. But he has stopped mining in the main base for, for a little bit there. So he has taken a lot of the the, the gas out of the engine for um, barracks. Is not really producing anything moment so it's kind of slowed down the infrastructure for the Terran, but this push is looking pretty strong. Stork's just trying to desperately buy as much time as possible. The one uh, caveat here is that Barracks is able to actually kill some of the gateways from outside the base, so he can put a lot of pressure on Stork and force the trade to come in. Here is a shuttle with some Zealot Bombs trying to get some work done, but they're not really finding quite great trades here. Now comes a, a big long stream of Zealots supported by this Reaver, and now the Dragoon's finally trying to be leveraged to try and clear up as much of the Vultures and Mines at the front as possible then retreating for more reinforcements to come in. It looks like there's enough coming out from the, the Stork infrastructure that he will be able to weather the storm here. And I, I think he did enough damage to Barracks by forcing that denial of mining there that there's not going to be enough gas in the tank for him to keep pushing here. That was some snow level reaver juggling that was going on in that fight. Really impressed that Stork's able to uh, bring this level of finesse to his games here in 2024 and the trickle of units i think you're right it's just it's too small coming across the map from barracks and back at home he's gonna have to deal with this counter this counter drop is gonna deal so much damage there's three shuttles here and two reavers he's just gonna abandon the main he's trying to push in but he's not close enough it's not like he's hitting a nexus or anything right now he's killing some gateways but this army is looking way too big. He's just going to cut through the front line here and back away. Wait wow. for another round of Zealots and you should be able to break this. And this is like Protoss 101, by the way. Run in with the Zealots and Dragoons, and as soon as the Zealots dry up, you, you just pull out with the Dragoons. A little bit mistake there of Rally Dragoons getting killed as they were coming out, but other than that, pretty stellar execution from Stork and completely denying mining in the main base yet again, ripping apart the infrastructure, even killing so many supply depots that he's threatening supply blocking barracks right now, while also still doing a pretty efficient job back at home at like skirmishing with this force that's containing him and has whittled it down to a nub where it's not really posing much of a threat anymore. Yeah, everything that's popping out here for Perix is just trying to clear whatever's going on in that main base. And nothing has been reinforcing this frontline push for so long that eventually Stork will run this over. Only three tanks remain, two tanks, one tank is left, and that is that. GG wow. will have to be called. Barrix has been completely outplayed here. The drop into the main as the push was coming was not handled perfectly and stork i mean with some great finesse and yeah. something that we wouldn't expect out of him just a year prior able wow. to bust this guy wide open dude Crazy very well sin. done shine gonna be sent out on minstrel this is quite the crazy map actually quite yeah. difficult uh, from my experience for Zerg versus Protoss as well. From what I've seen and what I've experienced myself on the ladder, it's very hard to move your army around this map later game. There's so many different pathways for Protoss to attack right. through. It can get really complicated. I don't think that Zergs have quite figured it out yet. Well, there's essentially five lanes to worry about, but the geography is so kind of crooked that it doesn't really make much sense until you've, you've played enough games on it that you, you got it in the back of your mind already. But until you do, it's kind of hard to exploit. Uh, I imagine that once you really become familiar with it, Zerg's not too bad on this map, but I, I can imagine Zerg really struggling just to navigate the usual ebb and flow of the game because of the extra 
boundaries that have been put in place uh, to worry about just to get around the map. Um, just like Storks being like hyperactive with his initial scouting probe, trying to see if he can annoy Shine right from the get-go. Shine's trying to have none of it, but it looks like Stork is being adamant, going to be getting this uh, uh, block on the hatchery at least a couple of times. Finally Shine getting that down. I'm curious to see where he's going to stack up against someone like Shine, because Shine is the kind of guy that there's like 50 plus different ways he could play against you, and you never quite know what he's going to bring to the table. It could be a Hydra Bus, could be two Hatch Muter, could be a Ling All In, could be some crazy, very fast um, fake Hydra Bus into a Hydra drop into the main base. You'll never know what you're going to get. Yeah, we're. Not sure what's going to come here from Shine, but you can assume it's going to be some sort of mind game, big brain play from him. Uh, traditionally, I think Stork has struggled a lot in this matchup. In the past, Stork was so heavily reliant on Carrier in TVP. Uh, he was able to take wins just with pure finesse uh, using Carrier. Uh, but he was always struggling in this matchup without you know, really putting in the hours and practicing uh, all the different aspects of PVZ. It's very hard to play up against uh, high quality caliber players like Shine, like uh, Jadong and Queen. But I'm really excited to see what Stork has here. Now that we can see him play, you know, traditional PVT or uh, that actually more modern style of PD PVT with uh, dropships and shuttles and reavers and play as well as he did in that last game i i just i'm so excited to see what he pulls out here <laughs> versus yeah, me Zerg. too I'm, I'm really curious to see where he's stacking up in this matchup it is possible that he will struggle a little bit more in this than pvt that's for sure but he who knows maybe he's got like a lot more confident a newfound confidence in this matchup that he once didn't have i'm, I'm curious to see um I haven't really seen enough from him recently to know where it's gonna when it was gonna go. And someone like Shine is one of the best trials by fire because if there's a weakness in his play, Shine's gonna find it and exploit it. Absolutely. Yeah, he is so so good at just reading the game state, reading the situation and finding the best move uh, for the moment and he's Getting some good information here with the Overlord in the main. He's seen the timings on everything. Even that uh, Corsair or the Stargate was built in the range of his vision. So he knows exactly what's happening. There's nothing really out of the ordinary thus far. We need to get rid of this probe before we can try anything strange here from Shine. But Shine is also completely capable of doing just a, a totally standard build. And, right. you know, completely rolling over any regular standard Protoss play. But if he wants to, and if there's some sort of opportunity or the opponent is planning to do something strange, if the opponent wants to play a crazy game, Shine is all about that. He will definitely be... Uh, Chine is like one of the biggest advantages to him is that not only can he do all these fancy cheese but he can just do a very straight up solid macro game and even play really greedy as well so if you do over prepare against him anticipating something coming he can just read the situation realize you're over committing to defenses and then just drone when he shouldn't be and suddenly like he's got a much stronger economy than you anticipated and this is one of the strongest ways to play as Zerg uh, you want to be um, have, have the image of being aggressive but then also have the ability to, you know, play more reserved as well. So your opponent, one, can't really get a read on what you're doing and you can kind of exploit um, that fact and force them to overcommit into defenses and force them to not be able to min-max their mid to late game phases. And as a result, you've got like a natural advantage. It seems like neither player having a massive advantage yet. Neither player... Um, over defending or under defending here. Oh, he's gonna get caught. He really wanted that overlord, so he turned around to try and get it with the second Corsair, but he's gonna take one shot from each Scourge. The other two might end up flying into the cannon here. It's really easy to forget about that Scourge, but he does pull it back, so keeping those alive is nice. Uh, you really can't move out with those Corsairs for now as Storic. There's just not quite enough DPS, not quite enough splash damage. 
and we're actually just going straight into hydra here from shine just pure hydra is popping out right now we don't have plus one just quite a few lings here in the front i'm surprised he's fighting this uh without the hydra support but he kind of wanted to hide i guess the fact that he was going directly into hydra and now he's going to come out try to block these in try to pick off as many as he can and he will actually catch two zealots which is very nice and lowering that zealot count here before uh, any fight i feel like shine can very comfortably drone up really hard while stork has to build defenses back at home it's actually really high level play what we just saw there from shine because his hydra speed was just about to finish and he knew that zealot legs would be like there'll be like a, a window of about five to ten seconds where there'd be no legs but hydras would have speed so he hid the hydras for as long as possible so that the they would be able to have a higher chance of surrounding and abusing the speed timing window that was available to him so it's like like a, a five ten second window for him to exploit which is what he's trying to set up for he actually did pretty good hey yeah, picked off a few extra zealots it's not the end of the world here for stork but a pretty decent advantage here for shine forcing out all of those cannons as well now he can just drone up really really hard and he doesn't really have to be worried about any zealot threat it's just this dt in the top right hand corner that he's got to be uh, conscious yeah. conscious of see the zealot count is quite low and now the drone count is very, very high. That's a lot of drones that have just popped out. We should be nearing that 45 number. Looks like one cancel on one of those uh, cannons is good for Stork. He can really get up to that high gateway count. The positioning of the Hydras is not the greatest. And we could see all the overlords go down here. But overload speed is done. So it's not too worrisome. We can definitely transfer overlords over here as we bring the Hydras up to support. But... The unfortunate part of this fight was that those Hydras were not in the correct position. They were not ready for this Zealot move into to happen, but he's not going to take too, too much damage. He's actually trapped these Zealots in the corner. I don't know about this. We probably should have made a run for it, but the Zealots are actually all going to die at right hold position in that corner. DT sneaking in here. Oh boy, is this going to get a bunch of kills? Two kills, three kills. Here comes the Overlord. Looks like he won't get anything more. And more overlords going down in the natural. Oh god, Stork is actually starting to get some serious damage. That's a lot of overlords going down. The DT didn't do much, but the Corsairs are finding ways in. And this is just Protoss 101, like pulling the Zerg apart and just getting damage wherever you can. Yeah. It's almost like he was happy to sacrifice those elves just to keep the Hydras pinned down at the third for as long as possible to have, like, you know, more room to maneuver in the natural expansion and main base to try and find as many overlords. So, it's, yeah, kind of like forward thinking there from Stork, trying to pin all of the focus on the third base while he's actually setting up to exploit elsewhere and trying to get the focus on the DT a little bit too much so that he hasn't got anything protecting the overlords in the natural. Yeah, so, I mean, this is a nice little win here for Stork. Um, Shine will have a strong enough economy to bounce back, but the question is going to be, will Stork be able to get this base up at the third uncontested or not while putting on some pressure here? A lot of drones just popped out for Shine. He's not expecting an immediate attack here. He's got quite a few Hydras in the front. Oh, the storm goes down, but the snipe on the Templar was very nice. He's going to go for another one. He gets a second Templar as well. These Templar are not getting as much damage as they, uh, they really want to. And more Hydras are coming down from the third base right now. A lot of the Corsairs have been picked off. The Egg Wall here is doing a pretty good job of keeping these Zealots back, but he's going to target down the Hydralist and he wants to deny uh, an, an upgrade into Lurkers here for as long as possible. These Zealots are just going to take the fight. Might have been better to just run up into the main base. He is going to break off a few Zealots to run up into that main, but only one's going to make it there. And these Hydras popping out should be able to deal with that no problem. Corsairs are getting kind of low in number, and so we might actually see, since the Lurker upgrade was possibly denied, a switch into Mutilus here. What do you think, Shun? Yeah, absolutely, Sam. I think there's a big possibility. The, uh, the one thing that's uh, going for Stork is that there's not enough Overlords out to suddenly pump loads of Mutas, but he has enough to make like 12 Mutas uh, right now if, if once he makes some Overlords. So yeah, it could be a nice big timing uh, to go for a tempo switch here. It looks like we see a first few trickle of Mutas out already. And with Shuttles being out, this is going to help shut down uh, the attempts that he's, um, Stork's going to make into the main base as well. But it will be revealing his Mutas to do so as well. So that might be a bit of a tell for Stork to go back into Sarah production. Is this going to be DTs? Oh, one DT here into the main. This could be devastating. Shine is being pulled apart. He's got Hydras in the uh, in, in the main base, but he's got no Overlord here. 
Uh, at what? the same time, going into the third to deal a lot of damage. Five kills, six kills, seven kills already. This oh. is such a nice play by Stork. Dude, Stork is showing us a level we haven't seen in years from him. This is super impressive. I am, I am blown away, man. This is crazy. Yeah, this is pretty wild stuff. I mean, he's still got to hang on here. Like, he, he needs to. He's got already got dragoon production and an archon back at home to help protect these high templars from any mutilisk sniping them. Hasn't yet got enough corsairs to really threaten this mutilisk count, so we'll have to be very careful and tentative with how he moves his army around. I uh, don't know how much of defense he's got set up at his third base, but probably we'll be able to hold on to that, at least for the time being. Although these mutas are coming to snipe with Templars, he's not in position to defend these Templars, saying and a lot of them are going down. He's definitely trying to lay down some of the storms before they do get killed off, but pretty good snipes here from Shine. Unfortunately, though, looking at the supplies, it's like he stalks almost double the supply of Shine. It's kind of ridiculous, like how much damage and pressure he's been able to apply while growing. It's crazy how much damage that one DT did. It killed every drone in that main base. And he's trying to take another base over at the fourth, and it gets denied. Dude, Stork is everywhere. If you just look at the mini map while that drop was going on, Shine was dealing with so much. There was so many different little pokes that were happening from Stork all at the same time. And Shine even had, you know, six Hydras in his main base ready for a drop, yeah. but he just didn't have the Overlord there. I really feel for him right now. Getting pulled apart by this Protoss player. This is exactly the way you want to do it as a Protoss. But <laughs> it's, it's so fourth frustrating. Base fourth base. Stalk's yeah. taking a fourth base before the Zerg. This is crazy. What are we seeing here, Sam? Oh my goodness. He's going to try and take this fourth out in the front such a difficult position to this. defend and you know stork has easy access to the back of those minerals if he just parks on the other side of those minerals and you know use uses storms to Ooh, that's stop you from de from defending like how are you ever going to mine from that location i just don't think it's possible I don't think it's possible either, Sam. I think he's going to kill the Spire with a drop into the main base right now. It's got like 50, 60 HP on that Spire and like a full Zealot drop going on or something in the main base. Pretty good connections with those Scourge onto those Corsairs, at least from Shine. So doing pretty good in the trades. But now look at this full Zealot hit squad. Just going to make short work of that Spire and put pressure on the drones and deny mining there as maybe getting some kills. Shine is doing pretty good on the inverse though, snagging some more of those High Templar kills. Not a lot of Storm left available for Stork in his standing army, but has still got a lot of meat to it in just raw numbers here even the zealots in the top right quadrant here able to bully these hydras as they're trying to tuck tail and run up the, the safety of the ramp there yeah he's going to take a reasonable trade against these zealots now from the top of the ramp with the support of that sunken colony but his army his standing army in the front of his base is not looking that strong and it appears that Stork just going to run in towards this natural with the critical mass of Dragoons. There's no way for Shine to hold on. GG is called an impressive showing here from Stork. Two kills on the board already. This is like, I mean, this is like when you hand over your keyboard to your older brother who really knows how to play, you know? Like, is this actually Stork we're watching right now or is... Yeah, it's kind of crazy, right? Yeah, snow, it's... snow playing on two different accounts, or what's going on here? <laughs> I don't know, but the the, the the dinosaur is awake, and there's a lot more flesh on the bone than we thought, so I'm ready for it, saying. I, I'm, I'm curious what more we can see from him tonight. Stork is rolling. The wind is in his sails now with two winds and the wind at his back. What can this guy pull off? Can he actually take a win off of Rush here? Rush spawning in the bottom right hand corner on a very standard map. This is going to be a real challenge. Yeah, um, I, I'd imagine Rush will fare a little bit better than Barracks did, especially on Radeon with vertical spawns. So Storks will have his work cut out for him. Won't be lapping up an easy win here by any stretch of the word. Hopefully Rush can uh, bring it to him and then mix things up here. Because if he doesn't, if Stork just also takes out Rush here, are we going to like be seeing a crazy double all kill? Like, I, I would be all for it, honestly, for like Stork just to kill everyone today. But I I'm also not necessarily seeing it in the cards. I think that would just, you know, warp us all into another dimension. <laughs> this point, like, we, yeah. we wouldn't even real, you know, is this real life? What's what's actually happening? Did we develop Starcraft Psychosis? Yeah, some sort of weird 
alternate reality. Um, the simulation is real, guys, but in this game, we've already got the Nexus first. So we're gonna get a little advantage. This looks like a uh, Stork, like the, a year ago Stork, trying to get little advantages early on um, so that he can get into Carrier and, you know, just kind of cruise through the game easily. But he's definitely capable of playing on even footing and with us a little lead he actually might be able to take another win here yeah and with that cross scout they're both going to find each other relatively early the SCV now beelining its way to Stork's base going to be identifying this 12 nexus and Stork inversely now knows that Rush is in the bottom right quadrant as well Curious to see how Rush is going to react after seeing this very early Nexus from Stork. Is he going to try and punish this here by continually making Marines or what have you? Or is he just going to let it go and take a very fast command center? Well, he sees the Forge. And with the Forge, like, you can't really do anything if the Forge is there. We're going to build one cannon on the low ground uh, using this pylon on the high ground. And that's a pretty good shutdown to any marine pressure and yeah you can see that rush is just not even gonna bother building any more marines zealot is out here this forge does slow down the timing of the cybernetic score of course right. uh, and rush is just gonna have to be okay with that get his command center and i hope that he can you know from a slight deficit bring this one back in the mid and late game yeah, it's a bit of an interesting style choice here. You could go for double gateway to be safe instead. So you had two Zealots and then two Dragoons to defend against this Vulture timing. Though against 11 gas, you can get the Vulture there just before the Dragoons pop out. So you can kill like one or two probes maybe, which is what you'll see Sharp doing all the time. So it's interesting that Stork's going for this sort of like in, uh, mid-range style of uh, gateway forge to kind of make himself safe, but also kind of cut his uh, advantage short a little bit. So choosing not to be super greedy here, I kind of like it from a stylistic point of view. Yeah, it's very reasonable, reasoned decision-making here. Um, Stork is gonna get rid of that SCV finally, and he cancels his range. Interesting choice. I'm gonna try and slip out that robotics facility a little bit quicker, it seems. And we've seen this a lot from Protoss players recently. It was kind of a sneaky and uh, you know, kind of cheesy play in the past, but it's become more and more standard as time has gone on. Get that robo out as quickly as possible and you know, try to keep it under wraps here for uh, as much as you can from the Terran's view. Just canceling that, making it look like you're getting the range so you're super safe, but actually leaving a pretty wide hole in your defense just to get that reaver out a little bit faster get some damage going it looks like he's also just going to go straight into three gateways so it might be a very safe three gate observer into third base which is probably the most cookie cutter safe way of playing protoss so he might be suspecting some early aggression out of rush here and wants to make sure he's got enough production of dragoons to to deal with that threat uh, i'm not even sure yeah i'm pretty yeah he's not going to get the uh, the support bay he's just going to be free gate robo uh, observer expand which is which is yeah the safest way of playing protoss if you want to play a safe build on the ladder i i don't really get that though why would you want to cancel your range to get the observer out quicker i feel like the observer is very useful but the range is so much more essential like this attack that's coming in right now, we're not going to have range for it. And yeah, we have three gateways to try and deal with this uh, tank push into our natural, but it, it would be so much better to have range right now, don't you think? Yeah, uh, it's a bit of a weird choice, I'm not going to lie. Um, it depends on when the range is finishing. If the range is already finished right now, it's not like too much of an issue. He's coming, it looks like he has got range, but it looks like he has got a pretty good uh, trade here going so far. If he can get some more damage onto this tank, yeah, the tank will fall. I'm not so sure about this other tank, though. I think that the, the attack will continue here from Rush with the additional DPS of these vultures coming in. They will clean up the Dragoon just before the tank goes down, like I thought. Yeah, really unfortunate there for Stork. He almost had that calculated down perfectly where he'd be able to kill both tanks but not quite i don't think he has a range man i think he really had to run up close there uh, to get the yeah, shots off with that dragoon range takes a long time to build and i mean for this next attack he should have it but he's adding on more gateways he's trying to get into a reaver right now rush is in a very good spot right now trying to push in 
Can he get a good connection with these mines? He does get pretty reasonable shots with that, those mines, but his probes are under pressure. Four dragoons are here. It's time to go. He's going to jump on top of this. Does eat one mine, but he will kill off that tank. Very important wow. moment here for Stork. He will hold. That was really, really impressive how he shuffled the other dragoons away from the mine drag so that only one dragoon took damage from that initial mine. Really well thought out. Needs to be careful on this second drag. You're not quite able to get it this time around, so there will now not be enough DPS or phase disruption. Oh, yes, he's going to get the tank. He's going to get the tank. That's really big for Stork. And this dragoon is going to get the run by as well. This will probably will fall in short order, but that's one of the better scenarios for Stork considering how dire the situation is. This vulture getting in is a little bit annoying, though. He's going to have to chase that down with dragoons, which means there won't be dragoons at the front to deal with a tank that's currently pushing. Pushing. Nice, blo nice block with the uh, uh, pretty impressive play from Stork. Still cleaning up uh, what what the, the spinning plates might come crashing down. But so far he's doing a pretty good job of keeping most of the plates spinning. He's got three dragoons. He can maybe kill this tank. The vultures bugging out. One of the dragoons does get the mine snipe though. So pretty good mine targeting. And now we'll be able to clear up this tank as well. Really impressive stuff. Pretty impressive stuff from Stork to keep things like kind of held together while under this much pressure from Rush. Yeah, really impressive stuff by Stork. And he's going to run a probe past. Oh, dude, that 5 HP probe might actually get the Nexus. No, that uh, Vulture going to shut it down. Good response there by Rush. But he's lost a lot of tanks. You know, he's done a little damage. He's gotten into the main a couple of times. Maybe got a probe or two. But this didn't really do what he planned for it to do. It didn't really kill this, this Brodos player. It's about to explode out on the map. He's going to take multiple Nexus now, probably. Double expansion is what I'm expecting. And he is also at the same time going to get into that main and start to do, deal some damage. Just one cannon at the natural being very useful this entire defense. But it, at the end of the day, he loses a couple of probes. Let's see what this Reaver can do in response to this early aggression. There's hardly anything in the main. Just a couple of mines and a Goliath. But... Rush is holding on for now. Yeah, I'm not so sure he'll take a fourth Nexus after spotting those extra factories coming down for Rush. He might be a little bit more cautious. He might set up for it still, but I, I, he could take the Nexus now and be greedy, or he could wait until like 10 minutes and take it at a bit more of a, a normal timing. I think that if he does take a fourth base, it'll be much more likely that it'll take it at like 10, like 10. Yeah, he's going straight into carriers right now on three bases. So he definitely won't be taking it um, anytime soon. Uh, probably taking it closer to 10 minutes rather than 9, which does make a lot more sense. He might even just build the pylons over here and pretend that he's going to take a fourth. Yeah, um, that's true. Rush is putting down a few more factories. It's not yet six factory, though, for just a full-on six factory follow-up. It's uh, just those five, and it could be a CC coming out. We haven't seen any scan of the main base just yet. But uh, that will have to come down soon if he wants to find out about this carrier count and make the correct decisions to, to play for that. Yeah, there is a CC here. All right, this is very important. The CC is being delayed right now. And the fact that he's even building that means that he's not going for a six factory, just all in attack. And Sork is going to have time to build up a carrier count. He's going to have quite a few... Uh, to, to fight this next army that's coming out of Rush. Oh, another factory goes out. He is going to six factory to try and take his third base. This is interesting. Yeah, well, it, it'll allow him to put on some pressure with a timing attack and also have enough units to secure getting a third. But I'm not sure if it's going to be a strong enough timing to punish the carriers. And with the Reavers already out at the front, we might get some good shots off on these tanks. One of them already dangerously low on HP. If he gets a few more good shots off, he always oh, gets the shuttle. It's actually a really good uh, pickup there from Rush because now he can kind of push freely, take his expansion without any pressure and also have an opportunity if he wants to, to do a timing attack soon. And uh, the only thing going for Stork is uh, really just some Dragoon out on the map with a handful of zealots as well so not really a lot to protect these carriers for much longer yeah that was a little bit of an overextension from stork absolutely a little bit of that older stork coming out uh, slightly in this match is under quite a lot of pressure rush is a very strong terran player from the beginning of the game really rush was putting him under pressure and going with that early siege push to just mess up Stork's build, but Stork has his first two carriers. He's getting into his comfort comfort zone now with a fourth base coming up as well. Rush sitting back and 
building up on three bases is not the the best situation for him going uh, playing a game against carrier are we going to get a uh, view of what he's actually scanning he's not scanning the main that's for sure storks carrier transition is still likely unscouted here for rush yeah if that's the case then we might see a little bit of a weird situation because rush is actually in a pretty good spot picking up a lot of probe kills as well at the natural third of stork but if he doesn't identify the carrier threat and just lets him build up carriers which he might show the carriers oh yeah i'm not even sure if he can see these right now but it's kind of I, I think he assumes that rush has already seen them but we don't know for sure that rush knows it's carriers yet so it'd be really weird if he just suddenly showed the carriers and he didn't need to uh, you do usually want to wait until you have four because w when you have four they can actually start to fight and when you get six it become super scary but when you've got two you don't really want to show them traditionally unless you really absolutely have to utilize them still seeing some holes in the game for stork i'm really surprised that he didn't build a pylon wall over at that third and yeah. that he didn't add more cannons to that location just one cannon and no pylon wall means that all of those units are going to go down he's going to bring the carriers down and utilize the the uh, interceptors to bait the uh, anti-air here into attacking so that he can drop that reaver and try to get a shot off he does get one reasonable shot with the reaver it doesn't get a whole lot of kills but he's cleared out all of the turrets now and he can start to go to work on this third base a little bit don't want to throw away all the interceptors kind of want to build up that number as you get up to four but this is a reasonable a little bit of harassment here from Stork. He didn't lose the shuttle, no. he didn't lose the Reaver, and all the carriers are building up. Fourth base is rolling, and although the probe count has taken a hit, we're still even on supply, and even on supply is fine if you're going carrier. Yeah, I mean, as long as you're not, like, dying to a push timing, you're still okay. And if you've got your bases set up like this, you're not really worried as Protoss. Usually you'd be more comfortable being 20 supply ahead, but when, when you're sitting back on carriers and the carriers are building up more and more uh, exponential threat over time, and it's a bit of a, com like a it's like compound interest, it just kind of builds over time. So usually the game state is favoring the Protoss and the onus is on the Terran to grow rapidly or attack the Protoss at some point to try and, uh, you know, start squashing some of the expansions to limit the economic potential of the carrier player but it looks like he's actually killing quite a lot at this base and with the reaver support a lot of SCVs could go down here but inversely rush is pretty pressing the issue might get on top of this third base very soon so a little bit of a base trade scenario here not going to be getting the command center kill though so if rush can keep this push going and maybe uh, threaten the, the, the third this would be good for rush but I don't think there's enough uh, goliaths here to make that happen and, and also it might be a little bit tricky getting across this bridge so he's trying to snipe the nexus from afar here it seems oh the reaver gets into the main two reavers here in the main oh. is going to cause such a problem we've got only goliaths popping out right now Shun. that is all <laughs> that rush is making so goliaths obviously not going to be the greatest against this reaver threat now coming out with six carrier they don't have full interceptors just yet but he's being forced into an engagement because he doesn't want to lose that nexus just yet Will Rush be able to push through with that? I don't think so. Great kills here with these reverse shots actually killing off a bunch of reinforcing Goliaths. The interceptor count is looking pretty healthy and he's picking off more and more Goliaths. The Nexus does fall, but I think we can remake that as soon as cl we clear out this army. Zealots are coming in now. They have that speed. Dragoon's going to follow this up as well. They do so much better against those Goliaths. This army is getting very, very small, Shun. The number of tanks has diminished rapidly, and I think Stork can just easily re-establish this Nexus and get back to four base mining. Yeah, I think you might be right there saying that trade, even though the Nexus went down, looked a lot better from Stork in the aftermath. Now trying to press the issue, Terran army currently slightly out of position. Might better get the pincer on these Protoss units with the supply depot wall though, but it doesn't really matter. There's so many carriers in the sky here, six in this current control group, and there's not a lot of Goliaths to fight this. They're kind of just hopelessly like shooting at random targets and not really able to accomplish much rush might already be processing the loss here subconsciously because it's just gone so wrong so fast for him against this absolute dinosaur of a player that's just back from the dead gg finally called this man so far unstoppable saying when will where will this evening take us that is shocking rush putting so much pressure on stork you know stork under pressure would usually just break 
and you know even in a standard game rush should be favored but stork able to withstand everything and get into his comfort zone carrier still very very strong and with this new style that stork's been displaying with this new finesse that he's been displaying the carrier play is so scary now oh my goodness well if he can do all the normal stuff and he's that and he's still got the carrier play in the back pocket he's yeah. a menace absolute menace there's only one terran player left Shin. if he gets a couple more wins here he's going to take home that all kill prize let's find out if he has the the chops here to make it happen well this is a classic matchup one for the history books stork versus jadong could have watched these players back in like 2006 2007 oh yeah and you know th this would be a highly anticipated match but we're getting it here on monty hall like a 2000 2007 map <laughs> kind of hilarious yeah, it's kind of wild. I mean, yeah, back in the day, it'd be like Tau Cross or something. And, and now we're seeing an old map with <laughs> old dinosaur players still playing almost at their A-game level. It's kind of wild to see. I'm hoping Jadon can bring it as well. He's been playing with a, a new lit uh, tenacity as well. Maybe, I don't know, quite as the, con the caliber of Stork right now, but it certainly is in his own right, uh, you know, shaking off the rust and seems to be a back more in form lately. Yeah, both these two guys have been hitting it hard recently. Putting a lot of effort into uh, increasing their skill level and just becoming real contenders for these big tournaments once again. And this is very interesting. Sork is actually going to throw down an early gateway. He's going for fast as possible Corsair here for sure. Yeah, yeah, he is very teching up like crazy here. And Jadong inversely going for a very fast hatchery. And you, on this map, if you can get away with it, you want to be a little bit greedy as Zerg. It is a Protoss favored map, so you want to try and be as greedy as possible as much as you can. But it does open you up to being punished by the Protoss as well from some cheeses and some tech plays. So we'll have to see how Jadong hangs on there. I'm kind of curious to see, like, once upon a time, we, we kind of suspected that players wouldn't be able to keep going for StarCraft. Like, we thought, like, once they turned 30, 40, they just wouldn't be able to hang anymore. Like, they would be able to be physically fast enough to keep up with the youngsters. But it looks like most of us were wrong in our assumptions. We're now, like, sailing in uncharted territory where we thought these guys were going to have to retire. But it looks like StarCraft might just go on forever soon. Yeah, this is not StarCraft 2, boys. This is not a fast switch muscle fiber based game it's very much a strategy game and the knowledge and understanding and experience plays such a massive factor in who can right. take wins it's surprising all of us but i think shun is right in the assumption that we or the, the idea that we might actually be able to just keep going and that players may end up being able to just continue on and on with this beautiful amazing game and i've actually fought this specific build on ladder before what stork is doing right now and it is pretty hard to deal with he's going to take a nexus on the other side of the map so he doesn't actually have to defend with anything he doesn't have to build zealots he doesn't have to build cannons doesn't really have to do anything except get this Corsair out really, really quick and get a Nexus going so that he can immediately start to um, put pressure on Overlords. It's going to be very frustrating for Jadong to handle and to deal with. I'm not sure what he's no. going to pull out here to, to take this out, but Hydra Den very quick early on. Um, he still hasn't seen anything though. Like he has no idea what's going. There could be, you know, a Nexus already done and you know probes mining over here at the the natural base or there you know there could be this corsair coming there he's gonna see it right now that's the first indication that he has of what stork's actually doing it's kind of crazy well, i'm curious that if, if if this would wouldn't have been corsair opening if he would consider doing like a two hatch lurker cheese here or something uh if you know it depending on what the choice is of uh stork here but if not he can just use the the timing of the den to produce some defensive hydras knowing that a one gate tech is 
potential from Stork on this map. So it is a semi-island map and exploiting that as early as possible is usually uh, to your credit because the longer you wait, these walls do become mined out and it becomes a much more traditional three-lane map. This is very smart from Jadon. Look at him. Look what he's doing right now. He realizes that this is, you know, four minutes. There's a Corsair out already. Um, you must be sneaking a base at the same time as doing this. So I'm going to jump some lings over yeah. and go try to deny that. But this has already been mined out. Zealots are uh, in position. Stork is one step ahead and Jadong's not really going to get anything with these lings. No, it's going to be just going into like a three hatch spire setup, but... The timings of the third are a little bit, um, you know, leaving something to be desired. But let's the two Zerglings get in. That Zealot wasn't the whole position on that gap. So now getting the full scout off in the main and maybe being a, being a little bit annoying with the Zerglings on the gas probes as well. That's big. Uh, this is a, yeah, it's a big win for Jadong here. It's such a small thing, but it actually, it, it's not just, it gives you so much more confidence and momentum going in the game. And sniping off one or two probes and denying a little bit of gas mining goes a long way at this stage. He sees the Robo as well. It's going to be uh, Reaver Corsair, the choice of build from Stork. Uh, that is a pretty crazy decision to make, but it's very strong on this map. Three Overlords going to go down, wow. killing off a lot of this supply for Jadong and forcing him to just recreate overlords over and over again is going to slow down his eventual transition. Some Mutas pop out and they can get that moving shot. Good split here by Stork. He'll only lose, I think, one of these Corsairs. However, some Scourge are headed across the map and they may be able to cut this off. If he seizes air control right now from Stork, this Reaver Corsair play is going to be really hard to pull off. Right, yeah, there's a tiny window here for Jadong to get some tactical, tactical exploitation. If he catches one of these Corsairs, oh, he doesn't quite get it. This is crazy. He just needs like one or two Corsair snipes and he can flip the game when it's head cannons going up in the main base, but there's a few uh, muters already starting to hit it before he can finish the war pin. And with a few Corsair, a few, few Scourge to zone out the Corsairs, he will get the kill on that. Does manage to get one of those Corsairs on the exit. Yeah, this is kind of wild now. Um, it's kind of hard to, to say exactly what will happen. Jadong's already mining from his second gas, so he may decide to just commit into a full-on Ogre Zerg here and see if he can bowl Stork over, knowing that there probably going to be one cannon up, but... If he can just get one or two more course air snipes, um, maybe he can just go all the way here and finish Stork off. It's a scary moment right now for Stork. Some cannons are being warped in, but I don't think there's enough. I don't think he's respecting the option of that Ogre Zerg all in from Jadong right now. I think he's, he's thinking, okay, well, you're taking a third base. You're probably going to want a drone. But Jadong's not thinking the same thing. He's actually getting into his third gas. And that's only going to be for more and more Scourge. A good count of Mutas is out here. He is actually adding on another uh, hatchery. And maybe will start to macro out of this. There's the first shuttle with a Reaver in it. We're going to have Stork get aggressive, and the Mutas are on the other side of the map right now, Shun. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 this game could go either way. It's actually really hard to it's actually really hard to call what might transpire. Although, these Zealots, if they don't get found, might cause a lot of frustration. If the Mutas are still hovering around in the area, it wouldn't be too much of a big deal. But if the Mutas are on the other side of the map, and then the Zealots hit, this could be really annoying for Jadon. Because he wants his economy not to be slowed down at all right now, and he's going to have to deal with Overlords being sniped and denying mining, and maybe the hatchery going down. It's crazy. He's trying to get a bit of a counterattack going, though, trying to catch the Corsairs in the middle of the map, but he might be sacrificing the hatchery to do so. He's now turning around to come try and save that. It's dangerously getting low here, and Stork's going to try and exploit that by coming in with the Corsairs to try and get some free shots off, if he can. I think Stork's really outplayed here, and he's going to get that third hatchery. He doesn't have armor. Jadong does not have armor on these air units, and plus one is done. That's too many Corsairs to deal with. A lot of damage here. So much damage from Stork. He's actually going to win this game, Crazy. I think. It's two base this to two wild. base, and more overlords are falling. The the Spire is going to get targeted. Look at all the overlords that are coming out right now. They're just going to get annihilated. <laughs> oh, man. None of these Scourge can connect either. And we just don't have that critical mass. We don't have the angles here. Oh, he gets one connection. One Corsair goes down, but we've still got six. 
in the air and all the overlords are gonna fall the drones are dying more corsairs are coming i think there's mutas going across the map right now but like what are they supposed to do okay it's actually corsairs are actually scourge trying to catch corsairs coming across the map but this is all but over 35 uh, supply here half of what stork has i'm tripping all over myself because this just is not supposed to happen <laughs> what is going on it, it's extremely wild what we're seeing the, it, the, the tactical genius of stork cannot be understated like it, it's really wild to to observe um I, I honestly like i kind of feel bad for jadong it's kind of like ab abusive at this level i don't want to see any protoss complaints in the comment after this week like this is just craziness like, I imagine a lot of Zerg fans here must be like feeling it for Jadong as well. Like, this is kind of crushing to watch. Stork is just absolutely outplaying everyone today so far. He's going to get in here, just more and more damage. And GG is called. Jadong taps out four kills for Stork. You ever, did you ever think you'd see the day, Shun? <laughs> no. Stork dominating KCM. <laughs> No, I mean, it's certainly not until recently. I mean, recently my eyes have been wide open to him, though, because obviously I saw his performance in SSL, and I've been like, hold on, who is this guy showing up again? Um, yeah, um, but yeah, before the SSL, I wouldn't have thought it was in the wheelhouse for the script writers to suddenly, you know, go with this plot line and, you know, redemption arc, if you will. But I'm all about it, so. Deja vu the map for our final Terran player Royal to take his shot at Stork it's I, I'm, I'm feeling a bit of deja vu myself Shun. it's like yeah. Stork is he's back man he's a hundred percent back well I'm getting deja vu like I'm in the the effing matrix right now I don't know what is going on but I'm all about it I love the subvert in expectations of the script writers as always absolutely fantastic Mwah. like finesse like, I'm, I'm enjoying the story arcs that we're witnessing in kcm recently I'm, I'm hoping that it's satiating you guys back at home getting you your little starcraft fix during this two-week intermission of the ssl game so we're more than happy to oblige and provide you guys some high level starcraft action meanwhile you wait for those precious precious next round of ssl yeah, we're in the same boat as all you guys out there watching the SSL and waiting for those videos to come out. Takes a long time for those guys to put out new videos, but we're here every single week pumping them out for you. And the quality has just been through the roof this season, Jun. I'm loving these crazy, crazy weeks. Now, I... I'm a little bit split. I'm a little bit divided here in myself. Do I want to see Stork go all the way or do I want to get more games? I kind of want to see Snow and Mini play, but Stork is maybe not going to give them a chance at all. He might be taking home an all kill prize here. I want to see a double all kill saying I want to see him <laughs> smash Royal and Queen and just like completely flip the Starcraft scene on its heads and make people think what is going on? Is he actually going to get this? Oh, that's so close. This yeah. SCV actually can't do anything right now. It has to kind of bail out of the situation. Going to be idle for a little while longer until he can get a repair on that. He's going for it. Oh, my God. Oh. <gasps> He was so close to killing that SCV and surviving. Ah. Oh, the other Marine comes out. Oh, he might as well have just uh, committed to killing the SCV, but nonetheless, Royal's going to win a small moral victory there, killing the probe and saving the SCV, although it did lose a little bit of extra mining time for all those shenanigans, so something to show for it. Uh, going to be taking that Nexus pretty quickly, but Royal's very quick behind with his own command center, so relatively speaking, I would have to say as a Terran player, you would be liking Royal's position right now going into this game. For sure. I mean, a little moral boost here for Royal, but Stork, again, has the wind at his back. He's flying high right now yeah. on four wins in a row. A little setback like that's not going to hurt his mental, and this guy is a very strong mental player. He's been through the ringer. He's been through so much in his career. So much. So many... You know, second place titles, so many difficulties. 
you know, performing on stage and having all kinds of stuff thrown at him before finally overcoming it all and, you know, winning a Star League. Crazy, crazy story to player here in Stork. And that's the, the deadly combination is the experience on stage and the, you know, the experience of grinding and becoming a pro and then uh, slowly working your way to the top combined with just insane finesse and under game understanding. Stork's got it all here and as long as he's practicing like as hard as he has been recently, which I assume he has, this guy is looking incredibly strong and may maybe unstoppable. Now, Royal is going to put some pressure onto him. He's going to send some vultures across the map, put a couple of mines here. Think about maybe trying to do some sort of run by, maybe try to take a little fight in the early game. Did we skip range once again, or are we actually getting into that range now? This is great control from Stork, regardless. He is just going to yeah. hold this easily and kills a vulture for free. Yeah, really nice um, composure here from Stork all around. We saw that, especially against the game against Rush. Just how calm this guy is under pressure is kind of insane. A lot of people will choke when if things start to fall apart and the, the game plan doesn't you know, quite unveil how they, they hope it did. And when they have to go off-road, it's just too bumpy for them to get back on track. But someone like Stork, just you know, calm and collected like a psychopath, even when you know everything's on fire and still going to be able to navigate weird game situations that other players would really struggle to and you even see players of snow's caliber just fall apart in the ssl because they just can't keep their mental game together as well as having all that ta all that skill and tactical finesse is, is nothing if you can't keep your composure in these like high pressure situations and that's why we're kind of excited to see stork going forward because if he is putting in this same kind of work ethic for a while he might just kind of upset the scene a little bit and really like you know jostle things up absolutely now reaver coming across the map we've already got mines and turrets assembled here for rush but as we saw in that barracks game it's not necessarily a, a complete deterrent for stork he can still get in there he can still look for some damage his finesse with the shuttle has grown in recent times for sure we've seen Im massive improvements in the way that he's just controlling the early reaver and getting damage out of this unit is essential for him oh a starport in the top left hand corner Ooh. that's kind of nice. it's kind of interesting he's gonna go for a vulture drop here hiding that starport as the shuttle moves in and sees the all the buildings here and and what's available for store he or for for royal he might discount the fact that there could be a a drop ship out on the map and that could be very good for yeah. royal yeah, I mean, it's very hard. You you can you can be so good at StarCraft that you can deduce exactly how much you see with how much they should have, but it's very hard to get it so accurate that you can see that there's 150 minerals and 100 gas out of place. It's very difficult to be that precise. So unless you can, you know, somehow get some other kind of tell to tip you off, it's going to be very difficult for Stork to identify this and be set up to defend against it appropriately. He may just take a lot of probe losses as a result. Really big brain play here from Royal. Still clearing mines out on the map. Stork is more concerned about a run by right now, but we've got quite a few dragoons kind of sitting around the natural. They're not in the natural to defend the mineral line, but they are going to be available for a quick defense. Just how quick will uh, Stork react to this? Is going to no. be the decider. Oh. oh, the Reaver's actually back at home as well. That's a very good well, tool for cleaning up these. It's uh, not drops. just that he's. It's not just that he's going for this vulture drop. It enables him to also go straight into science facility and kind of obfuscate the fact that he's going more into like an upgrade Terran style. So Stork might misidentify this and think this is more like traditional like four, five, six factory one, one, but actually it's going to be a pretty fast two, one timing with the vulture drop coming in to potentially do a lot of de devastation. So this might not only blindside Stork in terms of the tech choice, but also do it a lot of economic damage. So might might be a really big boon here for Royal if he can execute this well yeah this is a very well thought out play from royal i'm i'm loving this this is this is some excellent decision making and strategic uh setup here we're all gonna get these vultures in but two reavers are waiting that's gonna shut this down very quickly if these scarabs can ever connect are you kidding me 
The dancing there, very, very good. He gets a, quite a few extra probes do, just due to that. But honestly, a very reasonable cleanup here for, from Stork. Is this no. you know quick upgrade mech going to pay off for Royal, um, considering the damage was not that significant? Yeah, I would say the damage was like somewhat conventional, nothing special to write home about, very minimal damage. I mean, it kind of did the job, but not quite enough to propel him forward and feel very comfortable in this game. He is adding on additional factories now, but he was only churning on four, so he's going to have to try and take this third base with only like four factory worth of production. Might be a little bit more challenging for him uh, going forward with this game plan. It is a bit of, even though it looks like the third base is super close, I, I assure you guys it's not. That, that, that that third base is an eternity away for Terran players. It's very difficult to get all the way over there and like defend everywhere else to make yourself like super safe to any kind of counterplay from the Protoss. That's why you'll see him very tentatively push out here and be very careful about how he takes this expansion. I think very shortly here, Stork is going to see the uh, science facility moving backwards. If he gets a vision on that, he's going to know exactly what he's up against, but so far he hasn't been able to identify that. He's pushing up forward here against Royal, going to just try to clear some mines and open up a lane to attack in. But he's moving his dropships around in a way that I th it feels like he's going to try and do a dive here while that third base is being taken, but it seems like that could be a bait as well. Royal is very well set up. Let's see how this goes. Zealot's going to drop. Oh, that one single mine actually dealing insane damage there. He goes. Yeah. Oh! Oh, my God! <laughs> Wait, what? That was some of the best Scarab's connections we've ever seen. That's absolutely insane. That's so much damage to Royal's economy already, and there's still more to deal out. The shuttle now rotating around into the main base. The SUVs are in oh transit. They're God. trying to get away. Torret going down. The, these SUVs, the lives are in imminent danger right now. They're all desperately trying to scramble right now right now. FUG SCVs need to be saved. Please donate, guys. They need all the assistance they can get. Although it looks like he will be able to get this shuttle on the exit, but so much damage was done to Royal's economy, so... That was like 11 and 8 kills, something like that. Crazy. Huge economic damage for Stork there, and Royal is limping. Can he put together a reasonable army to take advantage of this very early plus two? Or will Stork just be able to bust through this kind of medium-sized middling army here of tanks and and a few vultures and mines and just bust this third base open? It's such a wide area to bust through and Stork has these shuttles plus Storm as well. Great storms here on some of these Goliaths at the front. He's running out of zealots though and he just barely gets that one storm at the back rank of tanks but won't be able to finish them all off. Royal's gonna hold for now, but dude, Stork is in a really good situation now. Like, think about the difference between the damage that was done by the drop of Royal and how much was done by those Reavers. It's just inc uncomparable. It's crazy. Yeah. Night and day difference, absolutely insane. Uh, it, it, he looks like he has the, the 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 strength of someone like Best with busting through these positions, but also the finesse to set up uh, at the start. Look at this beautiful trade here from Stork. He might, he doesn't necessarily need to kill Royal. He's just doing such a great job of sniping off some of these siege tanks and causing an absolute nightmare. Now going to be able to trickle through to these two undefended siege tanks at the third base and kill those off as well, and just limiting any kind of push potential from Royal. Even though he's going to have these upgrades at a nice timing he won't have any units to push with no he he's he's not gonna be able to push for a very long time 95 supply for royal he's building rebuilding his barracks right now because he needs to add on more factories i guess i mean, can even afford to build off of that many factories this many factories you've got already it seems like a lot but the tank number is just so low. Another drop here. He's going to get such wow. a great trade. And he's got some Templar in here as well. He's going to storm this down. Stork is getting so much damage with these Templar. Dude, I am actually so upset right now that Stork is not going to get a bigger all kill prize. He's going to make 200,000 won, but he deserves <laughs> 2 million. Oh, dude, this performance is insane. Stork is just killing it right now and pulling apart Royal with just small groups of units. It's so impressive to see.
Yeah, I don't think you even have to be a Protoss fan to really appreciate what Stork is doing right now. It's absolutely out of this world. Like, he's going to maybe get the all-kill and then maybe even a double all-kill if he can somehow take out Queen in the follow-up match. I'm almost speechless. This is a wild day that we're seeing. I feel kind of vindicated that now all those, like, Protoss comments, like, you know, can be quiet for once and, and realize that, like, anything can happen any week. You just need to wait and see. Absolutely, dude. Stork is gonna break Royal here. Like he's breaking him on the wheel in ancient times. There's no setup, I think, in this position on this map that could defend this massive of a uh, overwhelming Protoss force. We're like 50 supply ahead with Storm. And there's hardly any mines here at the front. He's just gonna run this over. So many zealots here just eating this tank army alive and resetting that count is all he needs to do because he's still continuing to grow into the bottom right. He's got such a massive economy and Royal just lost basically every tank here he needs to do any sort of push. It's just so, it, it's, it's such an exceptional level of understanding of the matchup from Stork. He's exploiting these tiny windows right before Royal has like a critical mess to set up a reasonable defense. Stork is just barely breaking through right as the rallied units are starting to come out and then you don't quite have enough to stop him resetting your tanks. It's, the amount of finesse in this game is quite exceptional from Stork. I'm, I'm really excited to see. Pretty good from Royal though, coming up into this bottom right pocket, cleaning up a few of these Templar kills, trying to be as annoying as possible with what little uh, tools he has got to utilize. So I like to see that from Roy as well, but he is dangerously behind in this game and he's not going to be able to challenge this quadrant of the map that Stork's currently setting up. This second rally point in the bottom right with this natural expansion coming along is going to give him five base economy. We have a lot of gateways to utilize and it's going to be extremely difficult for Royal to secure a fourth base and threaten anything that Stork's trying to accomplish. Five base economy and Stork is still pulling little micro moves like we just saw in the bottom right there. Uh, you know... Dodging and holding position to get rid of mines with one single dragoon and cleaning up those vultures. It's crazy what he's capable of doing right now on just 250 APM. It's not like his APM has really blown up or gotten so much better, but he's just utilizing all of his actions so precisely and perfectly. Yeah. This is high, high level StarCraft play where blessed with watching today and stork is getting ready for another big bust here with five shuttles is about to run this terran player over one shuttle does die before it can fully unload but storms on everything beautifully done all these tanks are gonna go down and man this is not going as well as some of the previous but he's gonna clear out a lot of tanks once again starting to focus down some of these vessels royal will hold we're here now at 17 minutes with a 30 supply advantage for Stork and Royal is nearing that mine out. Main base is gone. He needs a fourth base and he has to take it now. Yeah, Stork is just happy to trade off Royal's army knowing that this is right when Royal wants to push out and gain some kind of map presence so he can take a fourth base and start to grow and now it's gonna be much more difficult for him to accomplish that. Another storm drop in his 12 o'clock pocket as well. More SEVs either denied mining or going down to the storm pressure. Real nightmare situation. Royal's doing a pretty good job of like threading the needle and like taking the most minimal amount of damage possible though so definitely props to him. He's done the good job of weathering the storm from Stork. Maybe he can start to turn the game around and slow Stork down and kind of get up a tempo swing here now that he's got a bit more of a presence out in the center of the board. His upgrades are now finally starting to kick in as well. Royal is getting into that deep late game with massive upgrades that can uh, allow him to trade way more efficiently with this Protoss army and it'll be up to Stork to, to equalize that with some good storms but he actually drops oh that's a great defensive matrix with the storms in the back oh man these storms are just wrecking this is exactly what i was about to say is he needs to trade uh with the storms that's totally up to stork how these fights go and he's just trading out fantastically he's preventing this army from taking a very important part of the map this really important high ground where he'll be able to defend top left has been seized by stork and royal has to take that look he's pushing forward with three tanks he's desperate to take this position on the map 
but Sork is just denying him for now and taking more bases at the same time is possibly denying this over in the top left. He's going to get a bunch of Dragoons over here, plus the Archon has been brought forward to get some extra DPS on this. He's got some Templar here as well. If he gets a Great Storm on all those SCVs, this is going to be devastating to Royal. He doesn't have one more Storm, unfortunately, and the tanks will clear out everything, but Royal is going to just barely hang on. That was so close to basically all of Royal's fresh economy at that fourth base going down. Yeah, he's just forcing Royal to stretch himself uh, as thinly as possible, and then he sets himself up for another barrage to now like lay siege to the weakened uh, positions that he uh, just opened up. Stork's like really like pl playing a PVT 101 with Royal right now and taking as many risks as he he needs to like keep the pressure on Royal so that Royal can't grow. And it looks like Stork might have a critical mass of bowling over this position right now. Two shuttles just dive bombing in, laying down a lot of zealots and now templar follow-ups to storm the clumps of tanks potentially as well stalker is just absolutely on fire today it's kind of wild to see that he's doing it to champion tier players like royal as well getting the all kill prize on on Terran at least and maybe even a double all kill prize if he can somehow take out Terran um, queen in the next game but so far it's looking like uh all she wrote here for royal dude these rallies zealots coming in we have storm no we don't have storm but the just did you see the rallying coming across? This is top, top tier play from Storg. He is playing out of his mind. There's that final storm to clear out all those SCVs as they retreat. And GG is called Royal. Oh man. Wow. Incredible gameplay from Storg. He gets the all kill prize. Not nearly as large of a prize as he deserves. I had a zero to it. Yeah, add an extra zero to that for sure. Add two for the double all kill prize if you can get that. Queen is the final player standing in <laughs> Imagine his being way. Queen right now. Oh Imagine man! Imagine being Queen right now. <laughs> I think everybody here had discounted Stork. All the play people in the audience and all the players on the board had probably discounted Stork is not really a threat anymore. Do you know what? But I'm so glad that I'm so glad that when you asked me the question, like who have I got my eyes on at the start, I said Stork was my first answer. I'm so happy I said that now. <laughs> Looking like a genius over there, but Stork, I mean, his performance has been fantastic up until this tournament, and now I think he's just proven that he's at another level absolutely crazy so tough to do these are these are results that we anticipate from a player like snow that we anticipate from you know a soul key to do an all double all kill like this i mean he hasn't made it happen yet but he is just on the cusp yeah it, you know this is asl champion level play it's crazy yeah, to, I mean, it's one thing to like get a few wins under your belt, but to get like five consecutive wins against some of the best players, it, you, the amount of composure and consistency required to pull that off is like is is, is hard to state. And if he can somehow be queen now, I, I don't even know. Like my internal emotions are going to be flooding in ways they haven't for a while. Um, even if he loses the queen, it's still a really impressive performance though. Cross map. Pantheon, Queen in the bottom left, Stork in the top right. This could potentially be our final game with a Stork double all kill. I, the words are difficult to even <laughs> pronounce. This is insanity. It doesn't make any sense, but this is where we're at in 2024. Not golden Age of StarCraft, man. Not a sentence we thought that we'd be ushering, no. but yes, Stork is on the cusp of a double all kill in week 3 KCM season 4. Uh, I'm so excited. I, 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 I cannot explain how like much nerd chills that I'm getting right now. This is insane. One player stands in his way, it's Queen, who hasn't been showing the greatest performance uh, in the past season, but he's really been practicing hard. You can tell from his performance that he has been grinding away as well. And 
Zero, AK Queen, is a storied player with a history as long as Stork himself, so... You know, I expect some fireworks here. These players yeah. have battled it out many a time on various stages, in various stages right. of their careers, but this is maybe one of the most hype uh, moments that I've seen between these two. Well, certainly Queen is a worthy challenger to really put Stork to the test now because even though his name is relatively new, he was once upon a time known as Zero and also not much of an economic player. He much preferred more like, you know, low economy styles and going for like very fast 12 pull, two hatch muta timings against Flash and what have you. So he's a very um, old school player as well. Maybe not quite as old school as Stork, but old school enough to hang with him on a deeper level of experience. So certainly a worthy contender here for the Dinosaur Pros. We're going to be taking a third base here after gas for Queen. Queen taking a very early gas here. And that opens up a lot of different play. Well, potentials here for Queen. And Stork's going to have to bear witness to that. He's going to have to uh, try to figure out how or what kind of style Queen wants to go for. Going to try to keep this probe alive as long as possible, hoping to see a lair. But we'll see yeah. if Queen can track down that probe and kind of obfuscate his next plans. He does push the probe out of the main, which is the main, uh, the most important thing here. And he's going to block the, the entrance to the main. So now he he's hidden. He can do whatever he wants. Stork will just have to react and try to get scouting information later on. Yeah, and, and the, the Zerg has scouting information advantage over the Protoss player in the early game because of the fact that you have overlords to scout with and you can deny vision by keeping this probe scout out with your early Zerglings as well. So usually you want to utilize that advantage as Zerg because if the Protoss knows exactly what you're doing, it's extremely easy actually to min-max your build order to counter the Zerg if you know what they're doing. But if you don't know, then you have to really hedge your bets and do a more mid-range style or then you, you're basically taking risks and gambles at that point. Well, Stork, he's probably not expecting a Hydralis bust because of the, the distance here. This is a massive map. Right, right. Uh, and we're cross map positions, so the, the rush distance is quite crazy. It's quite far. Yeah. And so he, he can kind of eliminate the idea of a Hydralis bust, but you never want to just say oh no he'll never hydralis bust here because yeah. that might be the correct play if that's the case well that's it he could you know utilize the reason that it would be a bad idea to get away with going for it and obfuscating it doing a pretty good job of hiding uh, hiding his tech so far and keeping this probe uh, out by killing it now and yeah basically he, 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 he could if he wanted to like take his hatchery at like 12 o'clock and build the third hatchery really close to the protoss base so even though he's rallying quite a far distance from his main two production he's got a slightly faster rally from a closer hatchery and you know you can do kind of technical cheeses this way even though the rush distances aren't optimal so you still have to factor it in even if it isn't like you know technically a good choice here we don't have any zealots out on the map right now no ability for stork to to scout and figure out what's coming but he's going to throw down an, a, a safety pot, a cannon here at the front not totally necessary but it's it's pretty important if you want to move out with any zealots to have two cannons to just deal with ling run buys and yeah. he is going to have that corsair popping at a pretty good timing here 530 is a very solid timing for that first corsair he's going to send that directly across the map and see that Queen, despite all the obfuscation and the very early gas, is not going to uh, opt for a crazy play. He's going to opt instead for a very normal standard Zerg style. And we're not going to have any sort of bust here. It'll be Queen going into a deep macro game, which I'm very excited about. I love to see Queen uh, try to macro it out here versus Stork because I think that's his most... His, yeah. his strongest style and I've, I've watched a lot of uh, tutorials and uh, explanation videos from Queen himself like how he likes to macro it, it, he's really one of the best in the world at uh, hitting those macro strides like only Soul Key and a couple of others can really come close to his ability to pump out masses of units in the mid and late game 
Right. Well, there was a, a phase for like about a year where he was completely dominating in Zerg versus Poros and no one could really touch him. He, he's kind of lost that mantle in recent times, but um, breaking the ankles on those Scourge a little bit there is Stork, but going to be keeping everything kind of staying the same here in the game state, not able to snipe uh, anything, but you will be able to get a little bit of scouting information with these Scourge. They have very short uh, vision range, so you, you usually end up losing one or two of them, but, you know, you can still kind of use them to, to check on things and see what's what. Well, he sees the Stargate. Cancel. Cancels it, yeah. Double Stargate is a pretty big tell. Um, I guess Stork wanted to try that play, but as soon as he gets scouted by the Scourge, you know that Queen's going to switch into Mass Hydra and counter you that way so oh wow bunch of mutas did well, pop out here i was gonna say earlier he did take a reasonably quick second guess so it does mm. still give him the option to like you know make a handful of mutas here and either put on some oh, pressure or use them to clean up yeah he went back in and checked and so now he knows there's no double stargate now he knows he can commit to a little bit of an ogre zerg play here he doesn't have to like, commit too heavily into hydras right away he can just drone up and then put on a little bit of pressure with the uh, mutalisk and scourge instead and that might work out really nicely for him there's not even a cannon in the natural expansion or anything so might better get a lot of damage done if he does go for an ogre zerg style with some zerglings as well to, I guess the DT might might be a little bit annoying, but I can't really see like Stork being fine here. I, I imagine that Queen is going to do some damage to him this game, for sure. And you know, we did a lot of talking earlier about the experience that both of these players bring to the table, but I think that was a visual representation what we just saw, uh, just showing you clearly the experience that these players have is. You know the the mind games of canceling and scouting and double scouting is right. it, it's uh, beyond what a normal player like what you can learn from just playing the game for a short period of time you have to go through you know hundreds and thousands of iter iterations of every different game state to realize yeah. what the potential is for each player and canceling and changing up their strategies and styles and uh, kind of mind gaming their opponents so really awesome that we got a to see that right there queen is i think done perfect scouting this game it'll be up to stork to find a way to to deal with this big fleet of scourge without a second stargate could be a little bit tough i wonder if we have plus one armor as well for queen because that would make things really really hard to deal with the, the mutas and scourge flying around right now would really have a hard time or the the corsairs would have a very hard time dealing with that yeah, be streaming next level if he also invested in air carapace as well. I'd be really impressed with that. It looks like Stork has like overcommitted a little bit to Corsairs. He's made sure he's got a healthy seven. Uh, if there is going to be some kind of Ogre Zerg dive with, with one or two good storms, he might better turn everything around. Being denied any kind of damage potential with this DT, but he will be able to identify the fourth base on the way. It looks like uh, going to be doing a bit of cleanup on R5 with some of these Zealots and Muirs as well, trying to thin out those numbers before being chased away by the Neutron Flares of the Corsairs. So everything's kind of like, you know, the calm before the storm at the moment. It seems like both players want to try and gear up for a more uh, heavier macro game. But I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like Queen will be able to do a, do a good job of um, navigating that. But so far, Stork's being very, like, tactical thus far of his thinking. Maybe he can bring something to the table that I'm not anticipating. Does manage to get one of those drones and put a lot of damage onto that hatchery. So now Queen will have to invest a lot of units to defend that hatchery to prevent it being sniped by a zealot run by or something. Queen is having a hard time getting his lurkers out of his natural. Did he make a mistake when, in building his uh, hatchery oh, like this? this? The egg is actually blocking yeah. him. Um, yeah, yeah. That the, could be a big problem. Bad. Yeah, it's actually bad. Um, it could be a little bit diff difficult for him to get good unit flow going. And it, it happens at a critical moment in the game. You can just die if you just can't get your defenses out in time. So this might come back to bite him later. He might want to start making the lurkers outside of the wall only to make sure that's not going to become an issue. Well, we're going to have Queen go into a hive here pretty soon. We already have the Queen's nest down and... Very essential, I think, part, part of going Hive is to have a fourth gas, and we don't have that fourth gas just yet. A lot of hatcheries coming down, though. He is going to be massing out a huge amount of lings pretty soon, and so he probably will have, you know, triple upgrade rolling. Um, you need four gases to be able to do triple upgrade, lurker production, and defiler production, you know, getting into those uh, higher level techs. 
You can't really afford it on just three gases. Oh my goodness, Stork not reacting there with the Corsairs until the very end of that fight. He lost so many Corsairs and he will get up here onto this high ground, but can he actually bust through? This is looking a little bit dicey here for Stork. He's got one observer to deal with this, but immediately going to dive on that. He gets the observer. Very nice play there from Queen, utilizing those Scourge and Mutas to just take that out. Shuts down the momentum here for Stork. Pretty, pretty big yeah. way. Oh my god, Dragon, where, what are these going? <laughs> Hello? Yeah, just bad uh, bad pathing there, I think, bugging out and running backwards into the Sunkens. I really like that uh, Queen made three Sunkens there, really committing to the defense of that uh, 9 o'clock base. I, I, I respect that. Um, I like how he's slowed down this fourth base attempt as well with these Lings. Done a great job of really slowing down the efforts of Stork. I mean, it's, the supplies look actually kind of kind of crazy good for Queen right now. He's, he's done a great job of slowing down Stork in this game and Stork's kind of having a hard job finding his footing and just when he's now starting to come across the map to skirmish with him, Queen's already just now barely starting to get himself set up and online and can start chucking Lings at the wall in a trickle and just try and get the most optimal trades as possible with his Lurker minefield already laid out. So it looks like Stork is just going to have to tuck tail and run and won't be really finding the kind of skirmishing trades that he was hoping for. So I imagine the supplies are going to stay a little bit Queen favorite for the time being, while Stork now tries to stabilize his economy by getting this other base in the top left. This is a true test for Stork. He hasn't been able to win or take any big advantages in the early game, and now he's going to have to fight late game Queen, who hasn't really taken any serious damage. Is he up to the task? Wow. Lings are actually going to deny this base over here, and Stork is feeling kind of ineffectual right now, not really able to make any damage happen with these. Uh, with this big army is kind of shoving forward and trying to take trades but uh, they're not going very well and the snipes and the observers have really been slowing him down and third time is the charm here for the the snipe on the observer and stork gets pushed back for a third time this uh, he's running out of time here to get a fourth base online yeah, it's looking really dicey um, right now for Stork. He's, unfortunately, every time he's tried to take a fourth base, the, the window before the cannons can get online, Queen's been able to punish him. Doing a nice little wedge uh, pincer maneuver here as well, cutting off some of the Protoss forces and doing a good job of trying to um, gobble up as much of this Protoss infantry before it can get reinforced and back to the safety of home. So Queen's kind of all over Stork right now. It's looking a little bit bad for the, our Dino Toss here. So far, it's looking like it might be a queen victory if Snow can't like get things together right here, right now. He's finally starting to get this fourth base online yet again, but it's 14 minutes into the game. Queen is already in like full uh, macro mode right now, pumping off like nine or so hatcheries. And if Stork doesn't start trading good soon, this this game will, will will run amok for sure. Well, one thing that I can say for Stork is that Queen does not have a fourth gas. Having that fourth gas online makes all the difference in the world when it comes to all the upgrades and high teched out units that you need for this late game army. Of course, Lings are fantastic. They do a great job fighting against the army, but you need those plagues, you need those lurkers to be the backbone of the fighting force, and he just can't pump out too many of them just yet. He's just done such a great job of slowing down Stork's own fourth that... He's still in a great position. You can see the supplies are really favoring Queen right now. And this fourth base on the high ground is going to be a tough defense. That is so many units that are coming across right now. There's only a few storms. There's like no Templar with this army. The Templar are just coming out of the natural. And we've already got uh, the, the Dark Swarm here to deal with this. That is a mainly Dragoon force. And Plague is done. Dude, 15 minute 30. We've already got Plague. Uh, and uh, Crazy. You know, consume. It's wild to me that Queen has been able to get this out, but this is exactly what I was talking about is his ability to just macro like a god is nearly unmatched in this matchup. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's he's clearing up what little Protoss forces remain, and he's still got a lot of rallied units that are now going to come out to the front as well. He's going to put a lot of pressure onto Stork. This might be the tipping point. I don't think Stork can maybe hold on for too much longer if Queen can keep executing these fights. Uh, uh, this 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 cost efficiently will be a little bit insane for Stork to keep up with. And he's only investing, like, small squads of units at the front as well, so he can just keep rallying, like, more and more for Stork to have to deal with, and it might just be too much for 
for him to handle right now. He's only just now starting to mine at this fourth base, and Queen's already knocking at his door, so... Well, at the very least, he's going to lose map control, and at the very worst, he's going to lose this base, because there's a lot of Hydras here, and his rallies are very nice, but we're going to have some... Oh, God, Storms both cast and killed... Those two Templars are gone. More Lurkers coming up here. Yeah, I think this is the beginning of the end. Zork is about to get finished off here by an old rival, Zero. Finishing him in a glorious fashion here with just pure finesse and units pouring across the map. Macro absolutely on another level here. Queen impressing the hell out of me. Stopping Stork. Uh, after such an insane run. No. This is crazy. Dude, look at how many units are pouring forward here. We should have at least control over the, our front as Stork. But, it, I mean, everything, all the... Even though we have, you know, several bases up and we're still mining okay, the the presence on the map is just not there. We, we don't have any room to maneuver here as Stork at all. Yeah, he just had no oxygen for most of the game. As soon as, like, Queen did some good scouting, it was all over from that point. It seems like Queen's really got Stork's number in this matchup, unfortunately, and was finally able to, like, you know, be the combo breaker in his streak. Although still a great performance from Stork tonight. Hard to, um, to state that enough. Get, get, killing five players in a row. Really insane performance. Finally calling GG. Taps out. It means we will be seeing more games saying it's going to be Queen against Mini or Snow next. Bit of a bitter, bittersweet pill there. I wanted to see Stork go all the way, but I'm always happy yeah. to see more games. I wonder who they're going to send out next. And Queen looking to be on fire, similar to Stork. Can he get a reverse all kill here? That's all, that is on the table right now. It's the <laughs> quickest, easiest all kill you can possibly get with only three players to get through generally you have to kill you know five which yeah, this is, is what a layup for an old kill yeah. if there was one right yeah it is a layup for sure but queen still has some very stiff competition to get through snow and mini absolute tippy top of protoss strength uh, in, yeah. the, in 2024. I mean, <laughs> it's funny to say that because Stork felt like such an insane player, but he's really the, should be the least threatening of this entire Protoss lineup uh, for going by history and, and by the, the most recent tournaments. It's, it's crazy that Stork is looking this powerful. Yeah, having five wins on the board in a row is absolutely unheard of for a player in his situation. We'll have to keep our eyes on him. I'm excited to see who is it going to be, the Snow or Mini. I'm feeling Mini, but we'll have to see. It will indeed be Mini taking the field here. Bottom right-hand corner on kickback, whereas Queen spawning here in the top right. Kind of a crazy map. Has led to some pretty serious macro games, though. Um... Especially for myself on the ladder. It feels like everybody wants to macro on this map, but <laughs> it uh, means that, you know, with the wide open entrance, you can be punished. Uh, it's a little bit tough to punish Protoss here because they can create such a tight wall with only one gap. Right. But there are there is potential. If you want to go for a nine pool, you can certainly deal a lot of damage if the Protoss is getting really greedy. Yeah, I mean, you might even be able to do something more tactical and even cheesier of like a seven pool speed or something. I'm not sure exactly on the timings on this, but I'm sure there's a lot of crazy stuff you could do to try and exploit a little bit of Protoss greed, though. So get creative, guys. Uh, you always want to try and exploit your opponents when you can. You don't want to play super standard all the time. For sure. Um, not a crazy greed game here from Queen either. We've seen some games with you know, triple hatchery early on. But uh, here we've got the pool on the way. And see what the timing is on this gas because... I was very interested in the really early gas timing from Queen last time uh, versus Stork. Um, I want to see if he repeats that again because generally when you go for such an early gas, you are going to be doing something a little bit more cheeky. You want to be getting some damage going, you know, doing 
pull it, pulling something out of the hat, but he really did just want to get that spire out as quickly as possible and play a very normal game. There's the gas coming down at 245. It's not quite as quick, but it is still a very quick gas, and it's going to allow him to get that spire out in good time to deal with this first Corsair that's coming. Yeah, uh, it, uh, it's actually really good for Zergs that the, the, the fast gas can just mean a very standard fast layer and spire timing because then it helps you obfuscate your cheeses because you can make your cheese look very similar to your macro style as well if you figure out your timings accurately enough. So, you know, it can be good to, to try and be as devious as possible because you don't want to just do a straight up cheese build and just let it get easily scouted as well. Uh, I'm curious to see um, what Mini's got planned here for Queen uh, on this map. Sometimes Mini will do these very technical rushes where there's not really a lot of gateways and units, but the technology is online just a little bit earlier than usual. Uh, doesn't seem like he's going for anything super crazy right now, though it's a pretty reasonably fast call. Sometimes you do see him go for really fast Citadel, and um, we'll do like a low, low count of Zealots, but with very fast speed to try and hit a critical timing on the Zerg before they've got a large amount of uh, Hydra's out. I'm not sure what his style is going to be today, but I'm always curious to see what we see from many. It's a little bit uh, less likely here with the Overlord just camped in the main base. It's hard to pull the wool over the zerg's eyes and we'll probably just see a standard play with that game. right with that um stargate coming down yeah it's gonna be pretty straight up play from mini as long as we see the plus one coming here in the next couple of moments i think he's gonna start this game at least with a very standard uh, decision of just getting out this course there early and playing things out in a very natural way we don't have that plus one coming up just yet is mini gonna try something crazy maybe a quick transfer into dt once this corsair's out yeah well that's the thing I, that's what i like about mini he'll have some very interesting approaches to the game it might not be very fast sell off speed but it might be third something nexus. a bit more yeah very fast third nexus here like not even before fifth minute so very greedy here from Mini. I wonder how he's going to follow this up. These speedings might better catch off these Zealots, though. Do manage to get the interception and surround. Does create a hole of retreat to try and micro back. So getting reasonable trade here, but he is going to be able to clean up both of these Zealots, even though he got a couple of those links more than maybe he would have if he didn't micro that. So pretty good trade considering he got caught, but that's a nice pick off from Queen. Yeah, absolutely. Getting some good value uh, for these early links and shutting down the, the information from Mini. Mini's kind of concerned that there might be something coming at him right now because he's gone for such a greedy build. I think he's going to be happy to just see there's lots of drones popping out here and Queen's mostly focusing on his own economy. Double hatcher at the front. It's quite funny. Interesting positioning on those, but this is the right time to be adding on those extra hatcheries. Yeah, well, he's kind of creating like a semi wall in here, like, you know, denying some of the unit flow later on, but not like making an actual complete dedicated wall, just going to create like a, a bit of a something to work with. So there's not a huge gap for the zealots to exploit of run buys. Uh, kind of like that. Oh, going to? Oh, look at this. This is wall is actually really curious uh, with the double hatch Evo and then all at the front here. I guess it's easy to set up with this uh, sunken, like helping you spread creep. It's easy to get that going. Yeah, it feels like Queen has stumbled upon something pretty interesting here. A new strategy, a new way of defending on kickback is going to make it really hard to bust through that area if he puts any sunkens behind it and goes into like a mutilus play. He could be nearly unbreakable at that location. There's like maybe one hole in that whole wall that uh, zealots can get through and if he puts an egg in there it's just going to be a, 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 f a dense fully defendable wall he sees robotics there it is the crazy wow. play from mini is he's going to go into reverse air what a, a monstrous strange decision here from mini to go for this play but it's crazy that queen managed to get in and actually spot that out yeah, really impeccable scouting with his Scourge in both games, has to be stated. And uh, But inversely, like, the ball's on Mini to go for Reva Ceres, but the hardest style to execute is Protoss. Does manage to gun down those Scourge nicely with only five Corsairs as well. 
Uh, you can still like get one detonation with those Scourge on those Corsairs if you're not careful. So doing a great job so far with putting on a little bit of pressure with this Corsair fleet just before there's too many pairs of Scourge to deal with them. And he's getting a supply block on Mini here with this tactical effort. So already frustrating Mini with very few moves here. Well, now oh, he's, he's going to do a transition. I don't think he's going to commit into Reaver Set. I think he's like using it as a fake out and he's actually going to be going into much more Dragoon heavy style and try and punish the wall in with Dragoons maybe. Another big mind game. This is super interesting. Yeah, the plus one is not for as important for the dragons. It's still very important, but will this one single scourge scout everything? No oh way. my oh god, he sees my everything. God. That's crazy. That's wild that we saw a double scout. The same thing happened two games in a row. This is crazy. Really high level scouting from Queen. Really impressed by this guy. Like super super high level stuff we're seeing here today saying both Rodas players trying to mind game him and he's just not letting it happen he won't let it fly the reaver is present but it's it's what is this gonna be a dragoon plus yeah. reaver well, push I was, into the front well, interesting I was, I was thinking i was thinking the one thing that this wall in was weak to would be like a five gate goon all in or something so the dragoons mm. do make sense although queen can still make sunkens out in front of the the wall in to compensate which i think we will see here yeah, he's even going to put a sunken colony on the high ground to try and pester, pester those dragoons as they're banging at that wall. And that is a lot of dragons coming out here. Queen is going to be under a huge amount of pressure in just a few moments. And what is he going to be pumping out aside from these sunken colonies and groups of hydras? Is he going to start switching into mass ling so that he can have some fodder for these uh, scarabs and, and dragoon shots or is he just going to focus primarily on hydra hydra very very good i against, think hydra. yeah just pure hydra against these dragoons he's had enough time at least to pull this out but this is going to be a monstrous attack from many so many dragoons are going to be following this out can he actually break this before that critical mass of dragoons reaches his front or will we be able to build up to that huge number where the dps from the dragoons can just overtake everything on the ground this first fight will make the difference a couple of dragons three dragons in fact just getting wasted and some scourge corsairs go down that is really, really a rough way to begin here for Mini. You want to get some good connections with the Scarabs and start to really overwhelm with Dragons. He's actually building some Zealots now. He's getting that Citadel, but that's a very, like, a, an afterthought building that's coming down here for Mini. He really wanted to get the pressure going with these Dragons, but it seems like he might be losing faith in that play. Yeah, I mean, he did seem reasonably confident initially, but I think he's starting to second guess himself a little bit here. This is a very good build order choice, especially with the free third expansion. He knows he can support this economically rather well. It's just very hard to execute, and so far it's not looking super hot for him. And many, um, Queen's doing a great job of like finding these chokes out on the map to try and exploit this army formation. Finally, though, it's making its way to the northern threshold of the map. Might be able to come in and get a tactical kill on this base in the top left. I'm not sure there's enough Zerg here to fully fight this force head on so mini might be able to get this base in the top left but will open himself up to a counter attack the counter attack could be deadly we have reavers in that natural which makes a massive difference but we've only got two cannons which is definitely not enough to handle this entire army some lurkers are going to push up here to the front the reaver's kind of stuck he needs to get uh, pull that back a little bit further he cannot be losing this reaver it's so essential to the hold here and mini yeah. is running his army back he was not expecting this it seems not adding on any additional cannons and not sending back part of his army or even his two reavers to come and help out with this he was expecting queen to try and save his base in the top left hand corner and that's just not in the cards here for queen he just goes for the main a very nice technical move here from queen is probably going to win him this game honestly yeah really exceptional stuff really unfortunate mini didn't like anticipate such a fast counter attack he really did assume the units would be sharking around trying to wait to find a, a way of engaging the army in the top left but queen just like called his bluff and went straight for it just using that expansion in the top left as a, a full-on bait to like kind of flip the tempo of the game and go for a kill move here he hasn't quite finished 
out the game yet, but he's already killed this Nexus at the third base and has done crippling damage to the economy of the Protoss player. And he's still doing a little bit of damage with these residual units now. So getting like as maximum amount of juice out of the orange before it's finally squeezed and has enough uh, in reserve to keep the game going so that Mini probably won't be able to find any compensation either. Oof, oh. losing the shuttle there is a really painful loss, but at least he was able to drop out the Reavers before that went down. Now, Reavers are kind of trapped up here in the high ground. Oh, he needs Robo. The Robo was targeted. I forgot about that in the natural. So after that goes down, I mean, we can't even get these Reavers out to the front to help fight this army. We've got no storm, and there's a lot of Hydras bearing down on this front, so he's going to have to slug walk his way down this ramp and try to get out to the front to assist with this big hydro flood can he actually hold on he should be able to with this tight choke and the two reavers here firing away it wouldn't be a very good trade for queen so he will back off for now but man the the map is really going to play a big factor here because queen is starting to run out of minerals on these two bases and his gases are going to run out soon as well not so for mini because he's just going to retake this third and get that mining once again no. Queen needs a fourth base right now, or he's just going to mine out. Yeah, the game state looks pretty good for Queen on paper right now, with even supplies and what have you. But the, the way this map works, the, 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 even though you have like access to these very fast three bases, they don't have quite the same longevity in them. So you will run out of the gas very quickly. So you're kind of forced to expand a little bit more aggressively as Zerg because you can't just expect your bases not to mine out for ages. They, they, they mine out much more quicker than usual. And uh, if anything, killing this base means that Mini will be mined out even slower than usual. So Mini will have uh, much more going for him uh, transitioning into the, the mid to late phase. If he can get a fourth online, we might be able to see a, a Mini victory still here. It was looking really, really bad for Mini for a while. It's still not looking the greatest with even supply. And Mini on this kind of awkward tech of going Reaver plus Dragoon. And Queen now having Scourge and Mutas out on the field to deal with that. It's it's looking tough here for Mini, but maybe, just maybe, he can take some good trades with the Reavers and work his way into a fourth base. Another cannon coming up here at that third. But that's quite a few Mutas to contend with. Just one cannon's not going to be able to stop that. He's going across the map for a counterattack. But this base is likely to go down and another Reaver may be sacrificed. More uh, kills on these uh, robotics as possible. Another counter here from Queen. As right as Mini is pushing into his natural two sunkens on the high ground, that's actually going to slow him down a lot. And his main base is just going to die. He's not turning around, Shun. He's just going for it. This is a crazy decision from Mini, but it really could be the last one in this game. Yeah, I mean, he's certainly going to die quicker, but he has got a pretty large standing army. He hasn't killed the den yet, so Hydras are still in production as well. Can make muters once that den does fall, if he hasn't already made a replacement den. But there's enough going on for Queen on the other side of things. He's doing a lot more damage to the infrastructure of Mini than he's uh, sustaining himself right now. Just the wall and units going down for Queen for the time being. Finally, the Reavers making their way deeper into the base, but now they're going to be isolated and targeted down by those hydras so it's just dragoons and a few corsairs left over which can lay tactical siege to the zerg when the units are in small number so we might have a little bit of longevity in this attack for the time being but i'm not i'm not I'm, i really feel like mini's taking the worst end of the stick here sam especially with all these mutas left over well, queen wins man he's just sniped yeah. the last observer and i think he's about to kill all of the uh robotics facilities all queen needs is some lurkers on the high ground and he should be able to win this game, even though he's going to go down to one base with everything dying. There's nothing left for Mini. He can't even recreate a base. Oh, he's going to make a Nexus in top left. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. There's actually a base that's going ambitious. down in bottom left as well uh, for Queen. If you see that yeah. kind of sneak base down there, hidden base is going to come up. These mutas are going to come over here and try to deny this Nexus. They should be able to get it. it. As soon as that goes down, I think this game is over. You have to keep this alive right now. And I don't think the mini can make that happen. No, I don't think he can either, same, which means we're probably going to be going to a final game. It's wild. We were almost in for a double all-kill scenario, and now we're seeing a reverse uh, all-kill from Queen if he can somehow take Snow out in this next game. GG finally being called by Mini. What a wild evening, Sam. 
Here we are in our final game of the night. Queen versus Snow. Back on Minstrel for this last fight. That is a interesting final map to end this epic <laughs> series on. I was just saying that this is, I mean, reminiscent of, you know, week six last season. Such a good week of StarCraft and yeah the historical significance here is insane with the way that stork has been able to make a comeback it's i mean this is one for the ages boys you saw it here you were those of you in the chat put your names down in the comments down below i was here just History in the making. just just crazy the comeback we've seen from stork yeah, absolutely wild stuff. And just when we thought things can get wilder, it's going to be a straight up nine pool from Queen as well on a two player map. So, like, yeah, wants to kind of put himself into the driver's seat rather than be more reactive with an over pool. So, this will be interesting to see how he wants to, to navigate this. If he's going to make the six lings straight up and deny scouting and play a macro game from there, or if he's got something a little bit more cheesier in mind as a follow up. There's the hatchery coming down. Was this a nine pool? I think it was an over pool. We've already got the second overlord I'm out. I'm sure. Oh, maybe. Okay, my bad. My bad. I thought you took a nine pool. My bad. So, with the two sets of links coming out here, potentially, we can come across the map and try to put on some pressure. This micro is crazy. Snow on another level with that probe control and just trying to harass the, the drone there on the mineral patch can't tell you how annoying it is and how oppressive it is as a zerg player when you have that initial probe come in and nearly kill your your drone at the edge of your patches <laughs> it's just wild what some protoss players can do not always an indicator of of full-on skill though i've learned some protoss yeah. can really micro that probe but they really can't handle the late game well, yeah, sometimes they're like overcompensating with their unit control and they're not quite strong enough macro players. But And also they're not necessarily good at task switching. They might be microing the probe a lot, but how well are they hitting their build order? And mm -hmm. what you, what's really scary is when they're hitting their build order and they're good macro players and they can use their probe in those little niche ways in the early game. That's when you start to become a really scary player. Snow, the scariest of them all right now, Prodas. Uh, he's carrying them on his back as of late, but it seems like new heroes are emerging in Stork. Able to do so much work. It's just down to him to beat one player. All he has to do is take down Queen here to get that first victory on the board for Protoss this week or this season. That's kind of a big moment here. At least one one point on the board at least from stork's performance but if he can get this win second point will be up and they will have a good start here a good foundation in which to maybe uh bring that to a lead sometime in the future but he has to get through this very impressive uh, zerg player first and the way that Queen was counter-attacking last game and just constantly utilizing uh, those counter-attacks to get around the power of the Protoss army. I mean, on this map, it's so much easier to make those counter-attacks happen, and there's so many different pathways to to utilize those. I wonder if we're going to see the same style of Queen this, this game. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, if you do attempt that kind of style, it's very punishable if you, you get caught. We, we saw Queen get taken out like that before, where he's kind of got everything set up, but there's just not quite enough defending the natural expansion, and someone like Bisu just bowls him over. It does happen. It's very hard to establish total map control on a very complicated uh, map geography, such as this, with the five lanes to consider and the very strange geometry of the terrain to navigate. can be very difficult uh, for late games Zergs, even if you've got all your eyes dotted and your T's crossed, you can still get caught off guard by Protoss. I tell you, if Mini in that last game had just committed, you know, four Dragoons to kill the, the Hatcher in the top left and send everything else back home, it probably would have gone a lot worse for Queen. Probably. When that, that counterattack was happening. Or if he had built a couple more cannons, realizing that the army wasn't following him, just getting that extra defensive layer. Uh, for the Reaver to deal as much damage as possible. 
you know, things could have gone bad for him in Snow. I mean, he's probably learned from that last game he was watching. And he is ready, I think, to take on Queen if he wants to attempt that style. Queen here losing his first Overlord, but he actually can't build anything after losing that. He's, he's supply blocked right now. Okay, he does open up a little bit of supply in order to build a couple of pairs of Scourge, but... It is a little bit rough once that ball starts to roll and the Corsairs keep killing off uh, overlords. He is going to get a second overlord here, which is quite painful, but there should be Scourge popping out just in just a moment here to push this away. Again, supply block though. He's actually going to throw down sunken colonies in defense uh, in response. This is um, not the, the normal sunken colony time. This is not, you know, when you're comfortable building sunkens, but these are very necessary sunkens to kind of save his yep. life here against these lings that are coming out because he can't even make mutas to do something like a five muta defense. Right, yeah, these are like stabilizer wheels. Usually you don't want to see the sunkens until like seven minute plus, but he's making them super early because he knows there's a chance that the zealots come in even before the speed timing. So he's being extra safe here just to make sure there's no way he can just like take some unwarranted damage. And someone like Queen needs to have a strong economy to play the way he wants to play. So he's not gonna, you know, cut any corners here. And he's respecting the possibility of Snow just coming in here and exploiting him. And Snow was kind of pressuring and setting up to do that as well so very very thoughtful play here from queen and at least the supply block came in right when he wanted to throw down his hatchery so even though he wasn't making units he was still able to get all his infrastructure online during that phase of the game so he hasn't been slowed down too much relatively speaking just a little bit of annoyance there uh, finally going to be finding finding his way to a much more stronger mid game but there is a bit of a move out coming into the natural and there's no units here actually just one sunken so maybe something can be done here for, for snow oh boy Queen gonna get caught with his pants down right now. His uh, zealots or zerglings were all below uh, in that like lower pathway, and Snow just went around him going for the counter attack. He's just gonna kill both of these sunkins. This is getting really out of control already. It seems like Queen wanted to go for a very quick hive build with the double evolution chamber to get really quick ling upgrades, but. After all of this damage is done, can he even hope to, to maneuver himself into a, a reasonable game state where he can make that happen? I feel like he's lost way too much already. All these zealots are so low, but they're just surviving long enough to kill an insane amount of drones. And Queen is down in the dirt right now. 40 supply and he can't make anything. Dude, this yeah. game is just about over. This is kind of crazy. This is almost game ending damage and he can't make anything to clean up these Corsairs that are still going to be running the supply block. It's just a constant train of supply block. He finally gets on supply blocked. He makes a few scourge and then he's back to being supply blocked again. And then he's got to make more and more overlords and he's already not mining minerals in his natural expansion. He's already starved for resources and has to invest so many minerals into just overlords alone to stabilize his economy. Even though there's no third expansion for snow, he's done enough indirect damage that it should be enough to clean close out the game from here unless there's any significant blunders i'm i'm feel for queen man like he's been absolutely torn apart in this game but i i can't i, I also don't understand how he managed to have his natural expansion so open like that we talked about this earlier on this map it's very easy to have like just one position that gets forgotten about and you just become bowled over suddenly yeah there's so many counter attack paths and he had everything all his lings were over in that lower counter attack pathway he just was dealing with or he was holding only one uh, attack path that whole time and uh, snow just casually walked around the other direction and ran in with his zealots to deal all that damage there's some very good control from him uh, don't want to take anything away from snow but this is just a huge blunder from queen yeah, that's for sure. Definitely a, more of a Queen's mistake than Snow doing anything special here, unfortunately. Would have been nice to see uh, Queen have a better game against Snow on this map, because it will be much harder for him to navigate going forward. We won't see a, a normal Queen versus a normal Snow. Unfortunately, Snow will be able to trade way more efficiently than he should usually be able to, so we're not going to be seeing the kind of performance out of Queen that we would like to, but I guess it does give a Protoss players their win, which would be good, right? Yeah, I think that... Um, oh my... Ultra Cavern, okay. That's crazy. Okay. That's wild. I mean, how are we going to yeah. afford that? But 
Uh, we will have, you know, plus, plus two, plus two here pretty soon. Uh, losing all these lings is really rough. I mean, usually lings are not that impactful uh, in the game, but losing a bunch of lings here to a DT is is really rough. We spent so much money getting into uh, adrenal glands and plus one, plus one, and plus two, plus two is on the way. And Snow is just countering this perfectly, keeping his upgrades rolling and getting into a massive Archons. He doesn't really need Storm right now. He just needs bulk in his army and those links will vaporize. This is like uh, much more of the old school Zerg versus Protoss, where it was like mass mass speedlings with upgrades into Ultraling. And uh, as, as the Protoss player, you would end up making quite a lot of Zealots, quite a lot of Archons and what have you. So we're seeing a, a, a pretty old school style that's, you know, with a modern take on it right now. I don't know if the Queen's going to have enough to keep this army at bay for long, though. Sunkens are on the way, but they're not currently finished. And this is a lot of uh, army damage potential in these Zealots and Archons. Bit of a pincer maneuver. Beautiful storm, though, on that flock of Scourge coming in. More or less cleaning up all of them there. Pretty much all the Corsairs left alive and can just rain down absolute terror upon the remainder of these Zerg forces. It looks like this is going to be all she wrote here for Queen. I don't think they can hang on for much longer. Dude, that storm. So clutch to keep all of the Corsairs alive. Really well placed there. And Queen just kind of let the, cor the Scourge run through that. He knew that he was in a rough position going into this last fight, but he didn't have this, the uh, sunken colonies on time. And even if he did... I don't know, it seems like S Snow just has enough resources to deal massive damage either way. He was going to get in there and storm the drones or just kill off all the overlords. And now Queen, even in a worse position, less than half the supply of Snow. And Snow going to start making DTs on mass now. Doesn't even need Templar at all. Just some, uh, uh, just a few... A high Templar for some more Archons, and he's even going to switch into a Reaver now, which is where those old late game uh, ZVPs used to go, which was, you know, Reaver added in additionally to those masses of Archons and Zealots, and GG is called, Queen going to tap out before the last battle even happens. He tries it with the counterattack there, Ling's going in. But he's not able to get that final kill with the all kill. Man. Shun, what an insane week, man. <laughs> yeah, it's been crazy. What a ride. That's a little bit unfortunate, that final game. But every game before was just incredible. Yeah. So satisfied yeah. here. I, I hope you guys are satisfied as well with uh, this week of KSCM. Tidying you over until the next... SSL drop. I think these players have definitely played their hearts out today. Oh, absolutely saying. I mean, we're kind of spoiled for choice here. The only thing that you could say is like the end game was a little bit anticlimactic, but it's hard to compete with the absolute roller coaster we just bore witness to. Oh, I can't believe Snow almost got a double all kill. That's just wild stuff. And then Queen almost getting the reverse all kill, but kind of choking at the end there. Finally, a Protoss win on the board. I hope you guys in the comments are going to be a little bit more chilled out now. Uh, hopefully we'll see some more great lineups and great games in the coming weeks. I'm super excited for this this KCM season, Sam. That is, that's so funny. You actually said snow with the double all kill. It's just a uh, uh, slip of the tongue, I guess, because it's so <laughs> unexpected that Stork would be the one to double all kill. Your your tongue yeah, right. couldn't even wrap itself well, I mean, around he, the idea of Stork doing. He's controlling all kill. his Reavers like <laughs> snow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well. I mean, what an amazing week, dude. Yeah. Just crazy. Um, Snow giving us a great performance there at the end as well. I don't want to take anything away from him. Definitely a mistake from Queen, but Queen showing up huge, taking out Stork and Mini, giving them the second place. Awesome, awesome week of KCM. Just to wrap up here with the point rankings, two for Terran, two for Protoss, and five for Zerg. A closer race here uh, after this third week of KCM, Shun. 
Yeah, I think so. And I think that'll also give a lot more hope to the the Protoss naysayers and they won't be worried about lackluster squads just waiting for that semi-finals to roll on by. We'll see a much more bigger fight for it in these midweeks with Protoss and Terran now at even pegging. So yeah, this is looking pretty exciting going forward saying we might have a real race on our hands in the next few weeks and uh, Zerg already like on a bit of an outer earth orbit. Um, we'll be hard to catch up with them now. But uh, does, everything's still to play for, though. We might even still be seeing Zerg having to fight in the semifinals. Still, it's all to play for. That's right. And before you go, guys, make sure to check the links in the description. First link is the one to KCM's channel. Go over there. Give him a like. Leave him a comment. Send him some of our support. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been an absolute blast. This is what we live for, yep. guys. These are the weeks that we do this. Uh, tournament for these are the best of the best playing at the very peak level and start giving a performance that we never thought possible that is it we're going to be back for week number four uh, in the following thanks for watching see you next week thanks guys